Hello everyone and welcome back to Crayon Code. Let's create a nice little loading animation with just 16 squares and some animation delays. And by the end of this episode, you'll know how to customize and use it for your own projects. Just make sure to like and subscribe to my channel to never miss an update. So let's get this started with. Okay, first thing we need is a wrapper diff, which simply has the mosaic loader class. And I wanna automatically create 16 squares where I just, yeah, will be using some templating engine, which means that I have two nested loops, one with I as a counter, and I'll be iterating from one to three, uh, no curly brackets here, and uh, an inner nested loop, which runs from J and also from zero to three. And um, yeah, why do I need this? Because we wanna have a diff inside here that has the cell class and we need to put some delay on each cell because we want to have this diagonal ripple effect which means that we need to have a delay which is calculated by the sum of i plus j and that's why we have two nested loops here because we have want to have the same delay on the first row and second column and as well on the second column and first row so if you sum up i and j you will always end up with the right delay for having a diagonal ripple so, and if we check out the compiled HTML, you can see that um, here in the first four cells, because we will have a, a four by four grid. First, we have zero, one, two, three, and then we start with one, two, three, four. And you can see that it's always diagonally shifted by one. So that's what actually creates the nice little ripple effect. Good, that's actually already um, all we need with the markup. Now, if we start over with the CSS code, So let's actually first make the cells visible. Yeah, simply with white. That's uh, a singular here. Wrong, exactly so. Okay, now as soon as we set up the right dimensions, we will see anything. And I wanna, um, the, the wrapper, I wanna be a flex container where we will also have a, a wrapping because we need to wrap after every four um, cells, so that's why we actually are going to put this here. And now I want to make this customizable, which means that I'm be uh, I'll be putting some variables here, which means that we have a cell size, which I'm yeah simply default to 64 pixels, and uh, some spacing, which I'm going to put for zero pixels here, and a border width, which will create a nice little effect later. You will see, and. Yeah, as we have seen in the markup, we have four cells per row. And now for the total size of each cell, we need to calculate a little bit. Where, no, it's not, not this, uh, it's, it's the size of the entire um, uh, grid, which means that it's a quadratic grid. So we have the length of each side, which means that by the number of cells multiplied with, and now we have each cell size plus two times the spacing because we have, will be having the spacing all around each cell. So on each side there is spacing, which we need for the width, we need to take that into account. Okay, so now what we actually now have is that we will be setting here um, the width and the height to total size. And soon we will be, yeah, perfect at least some space is already taken. And now let's actually make the cells visible, which means that we will be configuring the flex configuration for no shrink, no grow, and we will have the cell size on each um, cell and forest. Perfect, so we have a completely white square, but it's actually 16 squares. And uh, because if we can see that, um, yeah, let's already put the, the spacing around it, where we say that, um, the margin is cell spacing. And if we now start playing a little bit, two or three pixels, we will actually see, yeah, it's 16 squares, perfect. Yeah, actually let's keep that because then some things get easier. And for completeness, um, we will have to set up the box sizing to border box such that it always works correctly because we will be applying some border where we have the border width in our CSS variable, 
and uh, yeah we still need actually a color so let's introduce a variable for the cell color because it's nice if we can actually um, customize this later so let's see that the border all actually has a color same color as it actually should have because I'm setting here um, where is it here background color is white and this should yeah for the ripple effect actually be transparent yeah so let's set up this per default on um, the cell color will be white and we will be yeah seeing our borders very nice all right so now we need some animation so let's put up some keyframes here let's call that simply ripple where we start at 0% with the background color being transparent so we pick up the initial state and uh, yeah, let's do it that way that 30% throughout the animation we will have being interpolated into the cell color. It's possible actually to reference variables in animation keyframes. And by the time of 60%, I want to be the background color to be transparent again. And for the reason of completeness, we will keep that up until 100%. So we have this nice little time frame from 0 to 60 percent where we fade from transparent to the cell color and back to transparent so now let's actually apply this animation to each cell where we say that um, it's the ripple animation we will ease it um, it will take 1.5 seconds and it will run infinitely often so and you can see that all squares flash at the same time so this is the point where we actually need to set up some delays and now so we have a certain number of delays in this case it's it's six and now since i also don't want to write this all by hand for each delay class i am simply going to put a for loop which runs from one through delays and now for each because if we if we keep the html into account here here we have this d0 d1 up until in the very end d6 so let's actually let's revert to here so we need to have a d class where we interpolate the variable i into the class name and we simply set that the animation delay here i times let's say it's 100 milliseconds and now you can see we already created that nice little ripple effect. And that's actually already it for the basics. And now by, by changing these variables, you can actually customize the entire loader to whatever fits your needs. You can make it smaller, you can make it larger, you can make it um, with lesser spacing or more spacing. So it's actually now uh, quite easy to, to customize also through the HTML actually. So it's actually quite nice at this point. Now, if you want to make it a little bit more colorful, we need a palette of 16 different colors, which I happen to have at hand. I have prepared an, an, an array of 16 colors here. And now we will be generating also classes for all these colors, which means that we can use a for loop where we run from one through the actual length of this color palette. And uh, yeah, for each nth child where we interpolate the value of i and we will actually just set up the value for cell color to be the nth element of the colors array at position i so and that already works so now you can actually modify the colors array and color your array whatever you want yeah, and that's actually already it. I hope you enjoyed creating this nice little loading animation and make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.